Hello. Today we're going to talk about how to pour an agarose gel. So agarose gel electrophoresis is a useful technique for observing different sized fragments of DNA. Agarose gel comes from seaweed and it is a highly purified polysaccharide or sugar that we mix with buffer, which is basically a fancy salt water. When we mix this together, we heat it up until the agarose dissolves in solution. And you can see here that when we keep it hot, we have a liquid solution of agarose. However, when the agarose cools, it will solidify and form what we call a polysaccharide matrix. This is basically like a spider web of gel molecules, of these sugar molecules, inside of our gel. That spider web allows DNA fragments, fragments of different sizes to migrate through the gel. So smaller fragments can run further through the agarose gel, while larger fragments get a, have a harder time running through the gel matrix and stay further behind. I'm going to show you how to set up an agarose gel. This here is a casting tray. Our casting tray is where we're going to pour our agarose solution. We have to enclose the casting tray by putting these rubber stoppers on either end. If you have a different version, you may tape the ends of your casting tray, but these come with rubber stoppers. This ensures that our casting tray is fully sealed so that we can now pour our agarose solution into our gel. The reason that these casting trays do not come fully enclosed all the time is because we need to be able to run an electric current through this agarose gel to migrate and mobilize our DNA through that gel. This plastic on all four sides of the casting tray would prevent the electricity from running through our gel. Before we pour our, our agarose inside, we need to add to it a comb. A comb, as you can see here, has eight teeth, although they may be different numbers of teeth, that we place inside the notches that are available on the casting tray. You can double comb, meaning you can place a comb in the top set of notches and the center set of notches if you don't need to run your DNA very long and you want to load more samples on here. Or as we're doing today, we can single comb the gel, where we put one single comb up top. Once our casting tray is set up, we can now pour our hot agarose into our casting tray. Be very careful when you're pouring because this solution is very hot, so make sure that you are handling this with something that is heat resistant. Pour the agarose solution into the casting tray until it's about halfway up the teeth of the comb. We have a line drawn here so that we know approximately how far to pour it, but if you don't have a line, you can just pour halfway up the teeth. Okay, that's good. Once you pour your agarose gel, do not move it. You want to leave it set until it's fully solidified. As soon as this starts to hit the room temperature, it's going to start to cool. And this will solidify in about 10 to 15 minutes. While that's setting, I have an agarose gel that is already set up that we can see here. So you can see that the agarose inside of the casting tray has solidified and has changed color just a little bit. You can see that it's a little bit foggy now. That's a pretty good indication to us that the gel is now solidified enough for us to be able to load our samples. You're going to remove the stoppers from each end, okay? And when we remove the comb from the casting tray, we should now have left behind inside of our agarose gel, these little slits, as you can see here. These slits are called wells. The wells are almost like little buckets inside of the agarose gel where we can place our sample. So this is how we will, where we will load our samples when we're ready to set up and run our agarose gels. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you've learned a lot, and we'll see you next time.